Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be my November wrap up. So I had quite a successful reading month in the end uh, in November. I actually managed to finish 10 books. I read over 3,000 pages um, and I read a mixture of romance, crime and fantasy and I didn't read any books that were completely new to me. They were all off of my current TBR. So I'm actually really pleased with my progress in November. November was a series heavy month for me. Steph over at Steph Loves was running a round of her uh, final book support group. And although she was only running it for a weekend, I decided to uh, run it for the whole of the month. Um, I didn't really take part over the weekend that Steph had set, um, but like I say, I did it as a month long, so that just kind of made things a lot easier for me. So, let's get into the books. The first book that I finished in the month was Stand by A.L. Jackson. This was the final book in her Bleeding Stars series about um, a rock group. And this book is the final chapter, it's the final band member um, finding his happy ever after. Uh, they're pretty formulaic by this point. I'm glad that I didn't binge the series um, and that I actually left some time in between them all uh, because they do felt all very the same and actually I'm at the point where I can't really remember the characters' names. In this particular book... Um, the band um, have some decisions to make because all of their lives have now changed. They all have different responsibilities. And the main character is struggling with that because he'd made um, a promise to himself that he would do whatever it took to keep the band together. And his love interest, she's trying to help him see that maybe there's more than one way for the band to stay together. Um, so yeah, so it was fun, it was good, it was quick. And it was a really good start to the month and it was really great to finally finish a series and get another series off of my in progress section. The second book that I finished in the month was Trusting the Dragon by Jessie Donovan. Again, this is another one where I don't really remember the characters' names because it was right at the beginning of the month. These books don't really stay with me. It's another romance novel. It's set in Jessie Donovan's world of dragon shifters and uh, we are on um, clan stonefire at this point again it's another couple who are thrown together and um, decide that they are each other's happy ever after um, it's a human coming into the dragon shifter world in in this story rather than dragon shifter to dragon shifter um, and again, it's another one. It's good. It's formulaic. They're not ones that I can binge read now because they are pretty much all the same. They're, they're interchangeable. Um, but it's good. It was the 14th book in uh, the Stonefire Dragon series. Um, there are currently 15 books out with book 16 due at some point next year. Um, so again, it was great to make progress in a series that I'd already started instead of beginning a new one. The next book is one that I already have a brief review up on my channel. Um, I'll try and leave that da linked down below or up in the cards. Uh, but that book is Which Way to Anywhere by Cressida Cowell. This is the first in her, I'm not quite sure of the series name, but um, both the first and second book start with Which Way. Um, so I think it is kind of the Which Way series, I'm not 100% certain. Um, but this is a middle grade book. It's about um, a family, a blended family. There are the O'Hero children and there are the Smith children, I think. Yes, the Smith children um, who don't get along. The only thing they agree on is their sister, um, their joint sister, Anna, Anna Peck. Um, the O'Hero children are supposed to hide that they have magic. But um, yeah, in this one, yeah, things all come to a head when Anna Peck is abducted. 
and they go on an adventure to find it. I found it really imaginative, really fun, really took me back to my own childhood because um, the people, the bad people in here are looking for a magical map maker. And I used to draw maps myself as a kid. Um, it was something that I enjoyed doing and, and puzzles and things like that. So I really thoroughly enjoyed this um, and I was really sorry that I hadn't read it. I started it a lot earlier in the year um, and I was really sad that I hadn't gotten to it um, much earlier. And yes, once this wrap up is done, I need to return it to my nephew um, so that he knows that I finally finished it. Which Way to Anywhere I was actually reading as part of a weekend reading vlog, which I will leave linked in the cards. I set myself the challenge to finish as many books I already had in progress as I possibly could over that particular weekend. And Which Way to Anywhere was just the first book. The second book that I finished in that weekend is Bonds of Chaos by Zach Argyle. It is book three in his Threadlight trilogy. So again, it was another final book. Again, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I had started it, as I say, earlier in the year and I had been enjoying the series. Um, I enjoyed the first book, I think, more than I enjoyed books two and three. Uh, and maybe some things could have been condensed and it may have been a duology instead of a trilogy. Um, but yeah, for a debut um, author, so this is his first series that he's written and released. Um, and it, I think it's an indie release as well. It's not a traditional um, publication. It's a great start into fantasy. Uh, I, the magic system was different. Um, it's not something I've come across before. So I enjoyed that take on, on magic. And other than that, um, it was more that you you could attack people with it but there was as much normal like swords and and it, fighting than anything else so um it felt a little medieval but also um i felt there was some there was an attempt to have different um types of society represented um maybe it wasn't always clear but uh, it was there there was an attempt there and I think if I came across a Zach Argyle book again, I would give him a go. He's definitely an author that I think um, has some fresh ideas and I think he could could grow as his stories grow. So I look forward to picking up more of his work in the future. The final book that I finished in that weekend was Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. This is book two in the First Law trilogy and I'm pretty much decided now the... Joe Abercrombie is not for me. Um, I am going to attempt to finish this trilogy. I don't want to leave this unfinished. But I think after this, these books will be unhauled and they will go to the charity shop and I will not be attempting Joe Abercrombie again. Um, I'm still feeling pretty confused about the end goal of this trilogy. Um, I don't see how the... There's, there's three storylines um, and I can't see any connection between the three other than the fact that all of them have been in one place at some point. Um, I don't understand how the war in the north is uh, is linked to what the first mage is doing. I don't really think I understand the magic system um, and I'm just feeling confused and not confused in in an intrigued way, in a, in, in a, in a curious way, um, just confused and a little bit bored to be perfectly honest with you. Um, yeah. So I'll give last argument of Kings go, if anything, just to try and find out where all three storylines are going and how they eventually connect together. Um, but other than that, Joe Abercrombie, sorry, you're not an author for me. The next book that I finished was Moving Pictures by Terry Pratchett. Again, this was a book that I had started in a previous month. It wasn't part of the weekend reading vlog, but that vlog did actually inspire me to get this book knuckled down and finished. This is Terry Pratchett's take on the movie business, and it has all of his usual uh, sarcastic humour. Um, you can really see uh, parallels between um, 
our, our views of the movie business or our views of the movie business in the late 80s and early 90s um anyway um which is when this book was written um and it, it, it's just they're good fun and i really enjoy terry pratchett's writing i struggle with his standalone books i really do struggle with with his standalone stories i'm much better um with his um books that are set with uh, series within series so the the night watch and the witch um stories the wizard stories and the death stories the standalone ones i find them a lot more difficult to get through i don't know why because they're not written any differently i think it's just because you might get one or two characters pop up um that you know from other stories um but there isn't because it's a series to me it feels like it doesn't flow um and i am reading them in publication order as well i suppose so that maybe doesn't help um but yeah again thoroughly enjoyed it finally managed to finish it i'm really pleased to get that one marked off um and to have another one in this series marked off towards the progress i was trying to make this year for my next book, I went back to Jesse Donovan and I went back to the Stonefire Dragon series and I read Taught by the Dragon. This is book 15 in the series, so as I said earlier, there are currently 15 books out. So this brings a series up to date. Um, so I'm doing really well with my series progress uh, in November. Um, this book is about a young woman who's been rescued and I have to say for the very first time I did not enjoy a Jesse Donovan book. Um, trigger warning for this book, uh, the young woman who is the main character, she has been abused physically, emotionally and sexually and I don't like how Jesse handled it. There is an apology from Jesse at the end of the book where she says that she's used some artistic magical license um to make everything seem real but i'm sorry even even with artistic license um someone who has that amount of trauma does not get over it in two days in in, in a week in a couple of weeks it doesn't happen like that and it was too early after this young woman's rescue for that to have been happening there needed to be a lot more time a lot more trust and just a lot more their story should have been either a lot earlier that or percy's rescue should have been a lot earlier in the series to have the book here so that there would be you know some time and you would be able to go back and discuss the time that they spent but yeah um i have to say on this is this is the first time that i've really not enjoyed a story that jesse has given me um, it really took me out of the story and I couldn't get on board with the couple. Although the main character, um, the love interest, he was absolutely wonderful. He was so sweet. He was so caring. He was so considerate that I felt that part of it was right. Um, because he was just so thoughtful of her needs and aware of her situation and was aware of how he might actually be a trigger for her. Um, and he he took care to try not to be that and and I felt that that was actually the best part of it um, but it needed to happen over a much longer period this was not a book to be wrapped up within a couple of weeks of it of the story starting I will go back um, I have the next book um, on my list of releases that I'm looking forward to next year um, because I think the the couple that will probably go to then, they are, it's going to be a different series. I'm not aware of any other couples that are likely to have this kind of storyline. So I will continue with the series. Um, she only releases one or two a year now, so they're not quite so daunting to get through um, and keep up with. Um, so yeah, so I look forward to reading more from Jessie in the future. And saying that, I did read more Jessie in the future. I then moved on to another of her series and that is her Kelderan Runic Warrior series. This is her sci-fi romance series um, set on an alien planet uh, somewhere out in the solar system. 
uh, there's a mix of humans, there is a mix of uh, the Calderon race, and we are bringing in other races into this as well. The next book that I read was The Forbidden, which is the fourth book in the series that she's written so far, and we are following the princess of the of Keldora, um, as she is falling in love with or has already fallen in love with a warrior in her brother's uh, court only their love is forbidden because princesses um, cannot marry warriors there are laws against it on Keldera. Um but it's how um, through their circumstances and because they're not currently living on Keldera, because they're on another planet uh, which is more embracing of differences and is trying to break all these old-fashioned rules that they have, um, things change and it's progression and it's it's just showing how, um, I think in, in this particular series, Jessie is showing how, yes, we can have these old, outdated, you know, incorrect thoughts and incorrect rules and discriminations um against people for perceived things um but how we can grow as a community how we can grow as a people and learn to be more embracing and allow others to live in the skin that they're in and be happy um and i really enjoy this series for that reason i do recommend it um I mean, like I say, if you want Jessie's series now um, are so big that I think if you want a taste of her writing, but maybe not invest yourself in 11, 12 book series, 15, 16 book series, then maybe uh, Kelder and Runic Warriors is a good place to start. After I finished The Forbidden, I then went on to book five in this series and I read The Hidden. This is uh, just um, a 50 page novella. It's revisiting the couple from the second book in the series. And again, it's continuing the theme of um, the planet Jaspar that the previous book was set on, being this all encompassing um, and attempting to allow everyone to be regardless of their heritage because there are there is an alien race that is very badly thought of by the Kelderans um, but there are some um, members of the community that for horrible reasons are half this other alien race um, and Jasper is trying to be more encompassing of that they want them which is why this book is called The Hidden. They want them to come out of hiding. They want them to be who they are. They want to learn about them. They want to share their experiences because there are some personality traits with this other uh, species that are not desirable, that need to be managed and controlled very carefully, or they could go very badly wrong. Um, but so they want them to, they want them to encourage them to say, yes, here I am. These are my experiences. This is how I've coped because they know that these traits now are going to be handed down, potentially handed down to future generations, and they need to know how to deal with it. They they need to learn from it and they want to, to help each other. So again, it was just continuing that theme of acceptance of others and others' differences. And again, I really enjoyed it. It was a very quick read, only took me just under an hour to read it. Um, and I look forward to picking up book six at some point in the future and bringing this series up to date as well. My final book of the month, my final finish of the month, is Crossbones by Kathy Rikes. And this book is a little bit um, for the moment we are in. Um, it's set, it's not set in um, either Quebec or North Carolina, which are the two places that uh, Temp Brennan, Kathy's main character, um, works in. Uh, she is... Um, doing an autopsy on um, a, a member of the Jewish faith and she's handed a photo by a mystery man and said this is the this skeleton is the reason that this man is dead um, and it turns out that this skeleton might be the bones of Jesus Christ um, and they were found in a tomb in Israel 
and Temp has to travel to Israel, take the bones back and there's lots of investigation and there's lots of um, talk of, uh, you know, what, if these were the bones of Jesus Christ, um, what could that mean for the Christian and Catholic faiths, all those faiths that rely on Mary as a, as a virgin um, and continuing to be a virgin because there, there is talk of Jesus having siblings um, and just how that could all blow up. But in terms of the story and figuring out who the murderer is, because obviously the, the autopsy is a murdered man and we have to work that out. So there is all of the backdrop of that story as well. Um, and I quite enjoyed that. I do find that um, with Kathy Reichs that... I might guess at the murderer, but I don't know for definite. And I don't know for definite until she wants me to know. Um, so I always enjoy these books and I'm looking forward to picking the next one up in the series. Uh, this is, I think, book eight or nine in the series now. So I'm making quite a dent in it. I'm almost halfway through the current releases because it's a series that's ongoing. And... Uh, I have to say that this series, um, initially, I think when the 12th book came out, there was an interview with Kathy Reichs where she said it was a 14 book series. Book 14 is going to be done. There's now over 20 books in the series and four or five short stories. Um, so it is a great ongoing, if you like these long drawn out detective crime stories, um, maybe you like um, the pathology side of it rather than the uh, detective side of it, then uh, I definitely would recommend giving Kathy Rux a go because she just has a way of drawing me in um, and keeping me in the story right to the very last page. So those were all 10 books that I managed to finish in the month of November. Really, really pleased to have gotten uh, four books off of the list um, of books that I have in progress um however there was one that fell by the wayside in my november tbr i did say that i was going to take part in steph's weekend reading um challenge to read a series and i was going to try and finish the um series by laney taylor the uh, daughter of smoke and bone trilogy and it didn't happen. Dreams of Gods and Monsters did not get finished. It was started. I read about that much of it, but it's still ongoing. So, as predicted in my December TBR video, this book is in my December TBR. So, hopefully you will see me talk about this one in January when I wrap up all the books that I managed to finish in the month of December, because December... Again, I'll leave that linked up in the cards. December is my attempt to finish the year out with no books in progress that were started during 2023. Wish me luck. How did you all get on in the month of November? Did you have any particular challenges that you were taking part in or any read-alongs? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, at the point that I'm seeing this, I've had a little flurry of new subscribers. Welcome to you all that are watching. I appreciate all of you um, just turning up and tuning in and just giving me a try. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.